what's good everybody it's Jamila aka Jamie and welcome to my channel or welcome back so if you can tell by the title um, I'm gonna be discussing how racism and colorism affected my depression so I go to a PWI which is a predominantly white institution and I I've been recently saying HWI, historically white institution, because, you know, way back when they were like, only white people can go here. So, y'all know that it's historically white, but we didn't have like people of color up until a certain year here. And even then, it was only like people like who are Asian or, you know, ambiguous. So, being at a PWI and being in Boston in general, um i definitely had issues with colorism and racism and how they affected me and I, I thought i would be like more secure in myself but also like having depression will change ha changes the way that i think about myself um because of how others view me and i think about how others view me a lot because i feel like i'm being judged but that's a part of the present depression and second guessing yourself and thinking about what everybody else is thinking about you because you're worried that they can see through whatever and it really affected me it made me feel like i like i wasn't good enough and like i didn't belong and just really really bad about me like my self-esteem was very low and i was kind of always sad and this is like it's not just because of racism and colorism it was just just like many things that made me this way but racism and colorism played into that so for one i want to discuss the dynamic of colorism before i get into racism because even in my own community i felt like i wasn't like like I didn't belong there you know what I mean so all the guys they would go for the short light-skinned straight-haired girls um like in my own community like black guys they didn't if they didn't want those girls those black girls who weren't you know me emphasis on me natural hair dark skin tall and kind of thick you know what i'm saying because i got it like that but they didn't want that you know what i mean they didn't want that and if they didn't want the the closest to assimilation they would definitely go for the asian girls they would definitely go for the ambiguous the hispanics the the people just like people who weren't us they weren't riding for us black men weren't riding for us okay and I noticed this when I went to parties because I would never get people to dance with me because of how tall I was or I had natural hair or whatever. And I knew it was these, thing, these things because of the type of people that they invited back to their after parties. So like if you watched how they treated girls who looked a certain way, like if you compared how they treated me versus other girls who fell in my same category versus like you know other people who were um not us they would get more attention more action and yes that's like you know you know fuck them fuck them we talk about that all the time like in my friend like me and my friends talk about that all the time we'd be like fuck them niggas like we don't need them niggas we we good we good we good on our own but it still hurt to know that your own community don't even fuck with you, okay? So I go to an all-women's institution. And there aren't guys on campus. So when we go on campus and go to parties, we have these interactions with guys that we just don't like. And it's harder because since we're so far away that we can't continuously be around these people to see what they're actually like so it's harder to have a positive view on something that just keeps happening over and over and over and over again because these are the only interactions that we're having with these men and it's just it doesn't make you feel good like that in itself 
with the men was hard but also in your own on your own like turf at your school like the girls who were popular or the girls who you know got the positions like or just just when i tell you that the community here is divided like we don't accept each other like for me as i'm sorry i'm saying like so much um i'm trying to break the habit and likes and owns up so the community here is very divided so when you have girls who aren't necessarily going for the mainstream thing like pledging aka or just doing certain things or going to a lot of parties or like if you're not that type of girl you're not gonna mesh into the community well me being a bisexual poetic person like i don't i used to like to go out a lot but after i had those interactions i was like this ain't my scene and being around a lot of people stresses me out and drains me so i was like being at parties and thinking about these interactions all the time that's not the interactions that i want to have on my weekend that's not how i want to have fun so when you're in your own community and you aren't accepted and they don't cater the community like if they don't cater activities that we do together towards everybody it's a problem like you aren't including everybody you're only for a specific type of person and that hurts to know that your own community don't fuck with you men don't fuck with you girls there don't fuck with you like you are an outlier and that's why a lot of us fall out of the black community like we're not counted as the black community because we don't come to these dang on meetings because we don't we don't feel comfortable we're not falling into what you guys like cater to so why are we there okay now racism is a whole different thing because let me see how to explain okay y'all know what racism is okay i'm not even going sugarcoat it because as a black person you have to think about things that they're gonna you have to think about things in a way you have to overthink almost guess what somebody else is thinking about what you're doing and then correct it to make sure they don't look at you in that way even because you you don't even know how they're looking at you boo like me being at pwy i'm mostly gonna be the only black girl in my classes if unless i'm taking like my africana studies class I, and sometimes sometimes it's mostly people who aren't black you know what i mean because you know other people want to know about us who wouldn't trying to learn us okay watch out but they overpower the they overpower the classroom and sometimes it makes you feel alone it makes you feel isolated and it makes you feel like you could be judged because we're always judged we have to be careful what we do and what we say in front of these people because not only like are we the only black person but we represent what you know black people are and if we don't give them a positive representation of what a black person is then they could come and come around and think oh well black people are this and black people are that and then you're it's all on your shoulders to represent your community in the right way and it shouldn't be that way but it is because if you have a white professor white students like you have to sort of you're sort of expected to give the black experience like when they're talking about anything like slavery or they're talking about anything along the lines of like what would a black person think if this was to happen they gonna look at you and expect you to have an answer or if somebody is doing something wrong and says something stupid and racist you expect it to call them out and i wasn't comfortable with this at the beginning of like coming to my school because it's like i didn't want the spotlight on me i didn't want it to be like oh why why she say that like why why she's so angry or anything like that i didn't want any of that to fall on me so 
I'm gonna tell you about an interaction that I had in a classroom. Y'all know who Audrey Lord is, right? And she wrote a book, I can't remember which one we were reading, and that's my bad. So I can't remember which one we were reading, but there was like, Audrey Lord was a lesbian and she talked about her interactions with her mom doing her hair. And automatically people started to think that this was like a sexual interaction by the way that she was, you know, describing it. like. When your mom does your hair, she sits you in between her legs, does your hair, and it was the way that she was describing it, they thought, oh, this is like, is this why like, that she's lesbian? Or, I was like, this is so ignorant because you don't understand the experience of a black person that you, you think the connection that a black daughter and a black mom has when she does her hair is her describing something sexual like a feel a sexual feeling and it's like it's not that at all and that made me feel really uncomfortable so after that a bitch stopped engaging in class and my professor noticed and she was like you know you could have gotten a a higher grade if you had interacted more and i said i just stopped feeling comfortable talking about these subjects in class because I was gonna be judged and this class was literature sex and sexuality so me being a black person talking about sex and sexuality me being bisexual like honestly it was it was the toughest thing as a first year to have to take up for Audrey Lord because like I had to chime in and say like no this is the experience um that a mother and a daughter has in the black community when they're doing their hair it's not sexual it's more so a bonding experience it's an appreciative experience it's an experience that you have between a mother and a daughter and that's the only way I can explain that and it's not sexual at all so for you to think that a mother and a daughter like she's described like she was describing some incestual like sexual feeling I'm like how dare you how dare you like that's crazy right so me being black and being judged and our experiences being judged and having to take up for people all the time that is a lot okay having to be the black person and have the black opinion that's a lot okay and I also have to watch what I do in front of people okay like if I'm in a dining hall I can't always be loud but these bitches can be loud though right and not be like oh they ghetto oh they whatever whatever no if I'm loud I'm ghetto if I'm loud, I'm, I'm, oh, that girl a loud black girl. The, the stereotypes that get placed on me for being myself and enjoying my friends in the dining hall and laughing and enjoying that, I'm hood, I'm ghetto. Like, ain't that crazy? Like, you, like, white people can do the same shit or Asian people or some pe other minority or whatever that ain't black, they can do the same shit get away with it but as soon as a black person does it it's a motherfucking problem like they had me second guessing everything i did like i felt like i wasn't smart enough because i didn't know what the hell i was getting into like me coming from not necessarily an underprivileged um upbringing but i didn't have the knowledge going to a, a close to ivy league school like I didn't have the knowledge of like you're supposed to reach out to do this you're supposed to get help when you need this and not knowing how to like necessarily write essays that well because it was just there was a difference in the way they learned and the way that I learned and I wasn't taught to think for myself I just bit my tongue I wasn't taught to think for myself I was told what to think and then how to do it okay here at a liberal arts institution they expect you to have something to say and then to write about it i was i had pretty good essays or whatever but like they aren't on par with what everybody else is doing in political science which i hated which i dropped they were like here's what this person thinks what do you think but stay along the lines of what they're saying Burr? I ain't know how to do that. I was like, fuck all that. I'm. I ain't. 
I ain't with it. My name, mm -mm, mm -mm, my name is Bennett. I ain't in it no more, okay? I ain't in this. This major, not for me. I left because it wasn't interesting. It was also talking about a bunch of white people. Like, that's another problem. Like, in college, you never really talk about the black people who contributed to this, like, subject. And honestly, it pains me because we know that we have something to do with the building of this country and in political science all they did was talk about how white people did this and white people did that and this white man did this and, it, and it's not even like white people it's white man did this white man did that white man white man white man okay he did this and he built this and he did this and i was like no fuck that fuck that black people did shit too where we at where is our representation nowhere and i was in a political science class and this girl who was also black said so where the black people at not in that way but i can't even remember what the teacher said but it was some bullshit you know what i'm saying like it's stressful as fuck you're not represented in your classrooms in the material you're being judged at all times it's like you're always having to think about your actions and how people are going to perceive them. That is stressful as fuck. And being depressed, that put me in, at a point where I was like, I feel like I do not belong here and people do not accept me. But they always tell you when you get here, if you got here, you belong here. And I have to keep that in my head. People, like the institution wants you, but the people here treat you as if you don't belong. So colorism, racism, like those two things combined together affected my, like I really isolated myself. Like I didn't hang out with people. I needed my sanity and I needed to make sure I was good because interacting with these people was so, it took so much. Like you have to put on an act in front of these people because I knew these people weren't going to accept who I really was. So me being the person that I am when you know, I'm around my friends, I'm be like, yeah, girl, what's <laughs> I'm be me. But as soon as another person whom I don't know is in this circle and I'm talking to them and they my friends' friends and they, like, I grew up around white people unless they was my, like, teacher or whatever. So I didn't have, like, daily interactions with white people who were, like, my age. So me having to do this, I felt like I had to put on a facade so they wouldn't, you know, judge me and... I grew out of that I grew out of that like maybe last year nearing the end and with people who were close to me you know and were seemed to be accepting of who I was because I it was tiring it was so tiring to always be on your shit like that like you can't be yourself you always have to go the extra mile you have to do two times as much to get half of what they got okay it was hard as hell and, I, and it freaked me out because I was just like, why am I so tired? Why do I hate this? Why do I why do I not want to do this? It was because a bitch was putting like up a, a whole different facade, had to overthink everything in order to present herself in the right way, being like knowing she's being judged, not fitting in. All those things drives you mentally insane. If you already there, bitch every day it's like oh i'm so glad to be in my room and by myself but having a roommate was a whole different oh god i totally that would be a different story time because that is another thing all in itself like my roommate story time my racist roommate who was asian by the way anti-blackness is real so that's gonna be a different story time but just know that these interactions affect the way that you work you're even more stressed out than the regular student so you may burn out even quicker like there are people who like like who i never thought were having issues who i thought were assimilating well and of course they may have other issues too but they feel the same way as i do but and even if they grew up around white people like they felt like they couldn't be you know black like like people feel like they can't associate with the black people because they're just black black you're a black person you with them like they don't want to fuck with you like that okay 
it, it was hard. It's hard on black people on like on black women and black people on campus and off campus and just it's just it's ridiculous. So so that's my experience with how colorism and racism affect my depression um while going to a PWI. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, follow me on all my social medias, um, which will be at the end of this video. And make sure you click the like button, subscribe. Leave me a comment about how you feel about what I just said. I'd like to interact with you guys some more. Like, I'm really, like, I really just want y'all to be like, bruh, like, mm, don't fuck with that shit. Or like, girl, you did that. Or here's another point of view. Or this is how you go about this. Like, give me, give me something back. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here for y'all. Like, I want to know what y'all think, what y'all want. I'm just, you know, I'm just a person saying things that y'all may or may not agree with. So, if you fuck with it or you don't, hit a like or dislike. I don't really give a fuck. Um, but yeah. Thank y'all for watching this video. I appreciate y'all stopping by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button, leave me a comment. Follow me on all my social medias, which will, be at the, which will be at the end of the video. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.